ご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りします。Hey guys, Kakarot 197 again. This time with a review of the 1100 scale Master Great Aegis Gundam from the Gundam Seed anime series. And this model kit has been provided to me by my favorite online hobby store, Hobbyling Japan. Links to buy your own Aegis down below. In terms of looks, we get exactly what you'd expect from a modern Gundam Seed Master Grade. The Aegis definitely still feels like the Aegis, but the proportions have received quite an overhaul, and the surface detail has also been increased tremendously. And this becomes especially obvious when you compare it to the original line art, or when you put it next to the old one 100 scale. So, even though they're supposed to be the same mobile suit, the vibe that you get from the Master Grade is completely different. Another thing that is completely different are the seam lines. Or perhaps I should say, the lag thereof. Good luck finding any seam lines on this Master Grade, even on the beam rifle, which tends to be the one thing that the least amount of effort is put into. But there is still one visual annoyance about the Aegis. This gap on the knee. No matter what I tried, I couldn't get it to go away. But let's talk about some more good things the stickers. We get the usual eye stickers, three front camera stickers, one back camera sticker, and then two stickers for the sensors on the gun. And the best of it all is that all of them have a clear piece behind them in case you'd want to paint them. Talking about painting, on first glance, the Aegis is completely color accurate with the inclusion of these stickers. It is only when we have a close look at some of the Master Grade mechanics that we will find some gray that has to be painted. And in addition to those regular stickers, we of course also get rub transfers and peel off marking stickers. But what I really appreciate here is that we don't just get the Zaft markings. But also Omni markings, so you could pretend that the Aegis was never stolen. So, overall, with my one annoyance out of the way, we get a really sharp and badass thick Aegis straight out of the box. But is the beauty of the Aegis just skin deep? Absolutely not. Underneath, we are getting an inner frame that's not just functional, but also extremely beautiful. It's nicely detailed, has moving pistons, and gives the Aegis some really good flexibility. So let's get that armor back on and have a look at the weapons that this thing comes with. We get two 75mm Eagle Stellung Seawiz guns on the head, and yes, those are molded in grey. Then, for handheld weaponry, we get the 60mm high energy beam rifle. And like I said, finding any seam lines on this thing is going to be pretty difficult. Getting the Aegis to hold on to it, though, can be a bit finicky. We do get two pieces, one for the left and one for the right hand. And even though there is a hole on the handle and a peg on the actual hand piece, once you put it in there, It's still going to fall out. Fortunately, once it is in there, it is in there relatively securely. The problem is the wrist. Which is not something completely unexpected when you look at the design of the gun. So you might want to use those included open palm hands to help support the gun. And if you don't feel like using the beam rifle, you simply fold up the handle, fold up this piece. Then take out this piece, slide it onto there, and then attach it to the side skirt. Then, next up, we get the Aegis shield, which is nicely detailed on both sides and also has quite a few options to attach it to the Aegis. The first is the traditional one, it has a peg here and will go onto either arm. Although, as you can already see when it's not attached, it is slightly too loose. And then the second option is to have the Aegis hold on to the handle, which is surprisingly secure because, unlike the beam rifle, which the hands wouldn't hold on to, the holding hands are actually extremely good at holding on to the shield. And one thing you might have noticed is that the shield has a hole in it, which does serve to store the beam rifle. And then, just like the beam rifle, you can simply flip this up to attach it to the side skirts. And then we've finally gotten to my favorite part of this model kit 
the four included beam effect parts. Even though they might not be super detailed, I am totally in love with these. They might not mount onto the Aegis like they do in the anime, but that doesn't make them look any less awesome. And believe me, the sheer amount of poses you can pull off with these things is incredible. And to be honest, I'm just happy to finally have an Aegis model kit that has four functional beam sabers. Then moving on to the other accessories, we get this action base connector that simply requires you to remove this piece and then attach that one. We also get a tiny but extremely detailed figure of Atheron in 1100 scale. And because this is one of the new Gundam Seed model kits, we also get the standard Gundam Seed X frame. But because it's the X300 frame, there are a lot of pieces that are still on it. Then there is of course one thing that the Aegis has that I can show you with this model kit, the self-destruct sequence. Which brings me to the question, this is a transformable mobile suit, so how is its structural integrity? Well, let's have a look at the articulation of this thing. The head is on the usual hinge and ball joint combo, allowing for some really good upwards movement, a little bit down, will also rotate around all the way. Unfortunately though, it is a bit loose on a certain position. Then the shoulders will go a little bit forwards and backwards, will go up really nicely and do have some piston action going on inside of them. Then the arms themselves will also go up really nicely, allowing the Aegis to do a final shooting pose. Then they will of course rotate around all the way, will also rotate around all the way below the shoulder, bend at the elbow on two joints, and then the hands are on the usual ball joints, will wiggle around, turn around and do everything a ball joint does. Another thing that's on a ball joint is the waist joint for some good side to side movement, and for the forwards and backwards movement, it also has an extra hinge joint inside of it. So despite the cannon being there, it does go forwards and backwards really far. Although that ball joint itself is a little bit flimsy. Then on the back we have two movable tail fins, which will come in very handy during the transformation. Then of course another thing we're getting is an opening cockpit revealing a tiny figure of Atheron inside. Moving on to the front skirts, they of course go up and down, but this piece will also go in and out to kind of make the poses look a bit more dynamic. The legs will go forwards really far and backwards even further. And the funny thing is, it has a movable back skirt, even though it definitely doesn't need one. And one thing that helps with these more crazy poses is that the hip joint is also on its own track. Outwards movement though is a bit more annoying. Rather than going in and out like a traditional side skirt, they go forwards and backwards and only this small piece will go in and out. What you're actually supposed to do is rotate them backwards so that the legs can go out. But as you can see, it's not actually rotating like this. You have to be very careful to unplug it, then rotate it around and anchor it again. And while I understand that in theory it makes the side skirts more secure, I also feel that it makes them more of a pain in the ass than it should be and could even make you more likely to break them. But hey, with those side skirts out of the way, the legs will go upwards really nicely. Then they'll also rotate around all the way, bend at the knees on two joints with some nice armor separation going on, and then finally the feet also have quite a bit of stuff going on. These flaps on the side will go in and out, this armor piece is on its own arm, and then the feet themselves are on the usual hinge and ball joint combo, allowing for some really good forwards, backwards, sideways, and rotation. And then we also get a toe joint. So overall, the Aegis definitely has some good articulation going for it that allows you to pull off some really cool poses. It is noticeable that it's a transformable mobile suit. Some parts could have been better, and some parts just could have been less finicky. And talking about finicky, 
let's have a look at the transformation of this thing. And unfortunately, fun wasn't exactly the word on my mind when I was transforming this kit. Things started off pretty great with the Mohawk not wanting to go back far enough, until it eventually decided to comply off camera. The body went back well enough, but then those side skirts decided to be annoying again. They transformed well enough, but even though their rotation locked in place, the hinge joint didn't lock nearly as well, creating a floppy mess that I then had to deal with for the rest of the transformation. The legs and the arms on the other hand are beautifully engineered. There's a lot of moving parts to really give the Aegis a mechanical feel and they also perform pretty well. Some parts are a bit more complicated, but overall things went pretty well until you had to shape them into a dart. Look, I tried for 10 minutes and this is the best I was able to do. I think the best solution here would have been to include some kind of air effect part to keep them together like you were able to see in the Game Boy Advance Gundam Seed Battle Assault game. Anyways, let's transform him to the much easier to pose shooting mode, which involves a few more steps than you might expect, especially if you want to go all out and also fold out all of those master grade gimmicks. And let's not forget about the gun and the shield either. I know you're supposed to mount a gun facing backwards, but personally I always thought it made more sense to have it facing forwards. So that's what I typically go with. And now your Aegis is ready to grab onto the Strike Gundam. So as always, the inevitable question is, do you want to buy this? And for the most part, I would say yes. Even though I do have a soft spot for anime accurate kits, the new proportions, amazing detailing, and the master grade additions give this kit a completely different feel for a different kind of customer. Which also means that it doesn't necessarily replace the old 1100 scale, but instead becomes an extra option. And one hell of an option it is. For fans of the Aegis, this is an absolute no-brainer. Just keep in mind that it's not completely perfect either. While stability is often a problem with master grades of transformable mobile suits, especially when they add in those extra mechanics, I don't feel like this excuses everything for the Aegis. The loose waist and shoulders shouldn't have been an issue, and the side skirts are just a pain. It's just kind of a shame for a kit that had so many other good things going for it. Good things that I believe definitely make up for those shortcomings. So then for some size comparisons, here it is again next to the old 1100 scale Aegis Gundam and the old 1100 scale Justice Gundam. And like I said, despite its inferiority, the non-master grade Aegis is actually still worth picking up if you want anime accuracy over articulation, armor detailing, and essentially everything else. Then here it is next to the old Master Grade Ale Strike and the new Master Grade Ale Strike. And thank the god Gundam that Bandai also decided to redo the Ale Strike because even though the old one doesn't look too bad next to the Aegis, it definitely needed those upgraded looks to go along with the rest of its siblings. And then finally, because I can, here it is next to the standard size Gym Custom and the usually bulky Zaku 3. So that's all for this review of this quite thick flyboy that was brought to you by Hobbylink Japan. Again, links down below. And as always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters. I hope all of you watching have a great day and I'll see you all next time.